Tom, so good to see you to talk about Becton Dickinson and the growth story at your company. You know, your medical products and medical devices were in great demand in fighting uh, COVID, uh, like the two billion syringes that you produced in record time that were used to vaccinate all those uh, COVID vaccines all around the world. Uh, it's not surprising that your company's revenues surged uh, in the past year, your profits more than doubled, and you even moved up a couple of notches on uh, Fortune's latest ranking of the Fortune 500. But um, COVID's been leveling off, so how can you continue this pace of growth going forward? Certainly, COVID had a big impact on the company as we provide all those products to help um, patients around the world. But we're far more than, than COVID testing and, and uh, and, and vaccinations. So each year we make 45 billion devices. Um, that's 5 million devices are used every day to care for patients in more than 200 countries around the world. And so we have a, um, a deep portfolio. Uh, many people refer to us as backbone of healthcare because of the ubiquitous nature of our products. More than 90% of people going into a hospital will be touched by a BD product. And we have an extremely exciting pipeline that's going to help revolutionize the future of healthcare. Mm -hmm. So talk about uh, the future of healthcare and your pipeline. Where is most of the growth gonna come from? We see three specific areas that we're investing the vast majority of our R&D dollars into, as well as our M&A activity. But the first is smart connected care and the use of AI, robotics, informatics to transform healthcare for the better. The second area that we're focused on is enabling care to shift to new care settings. So traditional hospital care, moving into the home or into your retail um, uh, pharmacy or into an ambulatory surgery center. And then the third area that we're investing in is improving outcomes for patients with chronic disease. Very often and historically, treating chronic disease has meant taking pills. There's innovation that's happening now where medical devices can be used to meaningfully improve outcomes in chronic disease, and we want to be leading the way there. You've said that a BD is known as the backbone of healthcare, but actually you've been moving beyond hospitals into retail settings, and you just announced a, a deal that you're buying a company that specializes in automation solutions for pharmacies. Tell us a little bit about it and how it fits into this broader vision that you've been telling us about. I think we all saw during COVID that retail pharmacies were playing an increasingly important role in delivering care. Many of us went and got our vaccines, for example, in those settings. Pharmacists busier than ever, labor shortages in pharmacies. Mm -hmm. We see a tremendous opportunity for robotics, informatics, AI, to automate things like preparing your amber vial full of, of pills. That can all be automated so that a pharmacist can spend their time with the patient consulting them, giving vaccines, doing wellness checks. So tell us about what are some of the other areas that you want to get into that go beyond the traditional businesses that BD is known for. As we think about care moving into the home, that's a great example. Um, we recently acquired a company that allows you to do COVID tests with your cell phone. In our pipeline, we have tests that will allow you to test yourself for flu and COVID at home, or test yourself or your kids for strep throat. Mm -hmm. We have technologies in our pipeline that will allow you to collect blood by yourself at home, and then you know, imagine pressing an app on your phone that a, an Uber-type driver would come pick up your blood and bring it to the lab, simplifying care in a dramatic way. And so we think that over the next 10 years, that shift of more smart connected care, more care delivered in the home setting, and ways to improve chronic diseases in ways that haven't been done in the past are gonna be tremendous opportunities to revolutionize healthcare, and we're gonna be at the forefront of it. Well, you know, you're in a unique position because you're both on the tech side of the business and on the clinical side of the business. Yeah. So by uh, converging uh, these expertise, the both es expertises that you're doing, uh, what types of innovations do you think that people can expect to see that will improve their everyday lives? I, th I think being able to test yourself you know, mm -hmm. at home is a tremendous opportunity. It started with COVID, people started realizing, I don't wanna wait days to get a test result, I wanna get it in minutes. That's, that's transforming people's lives in a real basis. Being able to empower themselves to treat conditions um, like cancer therapy, being able to administer that in your home, that's where it's heading, rather than having to go um, 
you know, work through traffic and, and sit for hours in a hospital, that's all going to be moving towards people's homes in a, in a much more powered, empowered way. Mm -hmm. And that's something that it takes technologies from companies like BD to make happen, and we're really excited about doing that. Well, I know that you've been partnering with tech companies like Amazon, Google, and uh, Microsoft. What types of innovations have already come out from those working relationships? A number specifically driven by AI. And so a great example of that is in the microbiology laboratory. Traditionally, it's taken two or three days to find out if you have an infection. We partnered and developed artificial intelligence that actually allows test results to get to a patient within 24 hours. So it cuts days off of, mm -hmm. of, of time. That's uh, all being done by computers and robots now. And that's a real impact for patient care. Tom, when you became CEO in 2020, it was right at the beginning of the whole COVID uh, crisis and the urgency of COVID, it seems, defined your uh, leadership beyond whatever you had had planned before this all happened. Tell us how COVID uh, shaped the way you had to lead VD right from day one. Certainly, the COVID crisis was not in my 30, 60, 90 day plan from the start. But um, if anything, the communications, the engagement with the organization that I had planned, it went into hyperspeed. And so I went from maybe once a month communications to every day videos, emails on, here's how we're keeping our employees safe. Here's how we're going to ramp up production to help meet the need. I remember very early on within the first month, um, it was maybe 10 or 11 o'clock at, at night. And my phone rang and it was a, a DC area code. I thought it was a telemarketer, so I didn't pick up rang again and pick up it's the White House. Can you be here at eight o'clock tomorrow morning for a press conference in the Rose Garden around how BD can help address the pandemic? I never thought I'd get that type of call, but you know, that's a little bit of a sneak peek into my 30 days. The spotlight was on you that the White House was calling you. What was that like? It inspired us. Um, the, the nation needed BD to come through. Did the White House end up doing any perks for you to achieve those goals? Uh, they certainly helped us uh, from a supply chain perspective when we had products. We had, uh, for example, our rapid tests were on Air Force jets being flown into the country. So that's a little bit of help, yes. <laughs> you know, one thing that people say about your le leadership in those early days is that your priority was to pivot to a faster pace of innovation to come up with COVID so solutions. You pushed for what you called speed to clinic versus speed to manufacturing. So it sounds like your whole leadership message was a call to action. That, absolutely. I mean, there were people dying uh, on a daily basis. They needed to get diagnosed. We needed to get people vaccinated. And so we needed to do things radically different. And to do that, we needed to get people empowered. We needed to take risks off of their plate. We needed to put all the resources of a 75,000 person company behind this purpose. When you have high clarity in your purpose, you can achieve amazing things. And I think we've seen that throughout society and, and we certainly saw it in the organization. Well, uh, you mentioned a moment ago that uh, BD has been around for 125 years and has a long history of innovation during crises. And I think ma many people may not know this, but the polio crisis, Becton Dickinson was the company that came up with the special syringes to administer the polio vaccine. So that's just you know one, one example. But, um, what is different about your leadership message today about agility and the innovation mindset that is different from the leadership message back in those days? Back in those days, we were just a couple million dollar company, right? We're nearing a $20 billion company today, so much larger scale. And often in, in larger companies, agility becomes an increasing problem. And so for us, um, we've been very focused on servant leadership in the organization, which is getting our leaders out on the front lines and understanding where's their kinks in the hose that are slowing things up. Empowering people requires leaders to be in the, on the front line with them. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important part of our culture. I think that's something that we've been um, accelerating since I've taken over as CEO, and we can certainly see the impact in, in our business. One thing that many CEOs uh, tell me that the hardest thing with COVID was uh, there wasn't a, pay, a playbook for dealing with this big problem. Uh, looking at the past two years that you've gone through uh, with all of this, what's been the most important leadership lesson that uh, you've learned through this experience? I think setting a clear set of priorities right from the starts. And so we never took our eye off of that true north of our overall strategy and how we can help reinvent and transform healthcare in the future. So it, it's that focus 
um, is something that I'd say I learned through that challenge of, of COVID is more important than ever before.